Fighters from the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine from the Kimik Group attacked a Russian military base in Syria. According to a Kiev Post source in military intelligence, the operation took place on the southeastern outskirts of Aleppo. The publication has received relevant footage. Journalists note that at the specified base, Russian troops manufactured and tested attack UAVs. In addition, the attacked base was used by the Russians to manufacture camouflaged improvised explosive devices, the warheads of which were stored at the position that was attacked by the GUR special forces, the article says. The video filmed by the intelligence officer shows Ukrainian military intelligence symbols near the Russian base. Soon after, an explosion occurs at the Russian facility, followed by the detonation of ammunition. The video also shows explosives that were previously planted in the base. Representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Andrei Yusov, earlier stated that the monopoly in the sphere of bandit activity of Russian private military companies is coming to an end. There are forces that can put these criminals in their place. He refused to confirm information about the involvement of the GUR in the attack on the positions of Russian troops in Syria. We can neither confirm nor deny about Syria. Yes, respected media outlets report and sources report, but the fact remains, someone did attack this Russian base in Syria and there are corresponding consequences of the defeat. Obviously, the aggressor state must bear responsibility for its illegal actions in different parts of the world and war criminals must be punished. Yusuf emphasized, at the end of July, the Kyiv Post received several videos and photos showing the continuation of the special operation of the units of the main intelligence directorate to destroy Russian troops in Syria. According to Kyiv Post's sources in the special service, at the end of July 2024, the chemist group carried out another comprehensive attack on the positions of the occupation forces of the Russian Federation in Syria. This time, the target of the attack was the military equipment of the Russians at the Kuveres airfield they occupied, located east of Aleppo. Ukrainian intelligence says that it is known that this object, among other things, was also used for training and sending foreign mercenaries to war in Ukraine. A massive pipeline explosion that sent a towering flame over neighborhoods near Houston for hours on Monday began after a vehicle drove through a fence and struck an above-ground valve, officials said. Deer Park officials said police and local FBI agents found no evidence of terroristic activity and said it appears to be an isolated incident. The ongoing investigation includes an effort to identify the driver. The blaze forced evacuations and shelter orders in the area including at schools. Operators shut off the flow of natural gas liquids in the pipeline, but so much remained in the miles of pipe that firefighters could do nothing but watch and hose down adjacent homes until it burned itself out. That could take hours, perhaps into Tuesday, Deer Park Mayor Jerry Mouton Jr. said. Firefighters were dispatched at 9.55 a.m., after an explosion at a valve station in Deer Park and right next to Laporte rattled adjacent homes and businesses, including a Walmart. Deer Park officials said an SUV drove into the valve after going through a fence on the side of the Walmart parking lot. Nearly 1,000 homes were in the evacuation area, said Lee Woodward, a spokesperson for Laporte. At the news conference, officials said only one person, a firefighter, sustained a minor injury. Later, Deer Park spokesperson Caitlin Bluejacket said four people were injured. She didn't provide details about the severity of the injuries. Letting the fire burn out is better, from an environmental perspective, than trying to attack the flames with some kind of suppressing foam or liquid, said Ramanan Krishnamurti, a petroleum engineering professor at the University of Houston. Still, there will undoubtedly be negative environmental consequences, including a release of soot, carbons and organic material, he said.